All right, in this video, we're going to talk about special screens. When we talk about special screens, we are talking about screens that don't behave the way that a normal game screen behaves. Uh, so if we have a normal game screen, like, you know, your level or whatever, uh, it, it uses meta tiles. It uses 16 by 16 tiles, and they load in a specific way, and it uses collision and things like that. Where special screens are more like start screens or win screens or maybe, you know, game over screens or, or maybe uh, you have a storyline or whatever, and it doesn't behave that way. It doesn't need the collision data, it, maybe it uses 8x8 tiles, all that kind of stuff. Now, one of the problems that we're having with special screens is that there are so many different ways to do the special screens. It's hard for us to come up with a unified sort of central method of, of handling special screens. So for right now, we just have start and end screens. And that's not all that you're limited to. And in fact, you could get into code and make other screens and make a jump to those screens as well. Uh, and we'll look at that in an advanced tutorial. For right now, we're just going to stick to how to create a start and end screen and how to, use, how to uh, supplement the tool with some of the tools that exist out there uh, for ease as we're making a better interface for our uh, for our special screens uh, creator because honestly our special screens creator is one of the projects sort of Achilles heels here I'm gonna load up um, that little test project I had going with the, the little bunny running around the platformer with the music here um, so if you look if you go to special screens and you go to start screen we have an interface for creating a special screen right here it's not pretty it's not intuitive it it lacks a lot of features that we wish it had and, uh, and so I'm going to show you how we can import special screens from uh, uh, externally, uh, how we could build special screens the long way here, and then I'm going to show you how we could build something in a tool like Shiru's Nest Screen Tool, which is amazing, and then import that into this. So uh, for right now, let's talk about how we would create a special screen. First of all, I need a tile set. Uh, this is my tile set right here. I could get in. And I could edit my tile set, and I could actually get through, get in. It's really hard to edit this tile set, though, because the pixels are so tiny. So, you know, I'd, I'd create a palette, like, like if I use this palette, and I, you can see how hard it would be to actually draw. And I don't have all my my tools that I have available in my in my uh, in my pixel editor here. So it's it's really tough to do. Um, so we're just gonna not do it that way. Uh, the other way that I could do it is I could go to pixel editor, I could go to new BMP and do a full tile set. And now at least I have access to all these tools. And I could actually create a tile set, you know, that has the title of my game and, and that kind of stuff. Um, but let's, uh, let's instead open one that already exists. So I'm going to open up uh, in my pixel editor, I'm going to go to my root, I'm going to go to my tutorial assets from beta, Nest Maker start screen files, and there's a BMP file here. I'm going to go ahead and open up. And that is the uh, all the tiles that make up that cool Nest Maker logo with the flames coming out of it and, you know, whatever. Um, so I'm going to save this over the top of my project's start screen, oops, start screen tile set. And now I have it available over here and give it a second to catch up and it should come up here. Go on. There we go. Okay. So uh, now if I wanted to just say use some of this with our editor, I could use my arrow keys to, to move around here. And then what do I want to place? I want to place this. The. So you can see how tedious this would be to create, but it is totally possible. So for those of you who have the patience, you know, this is actually much easier than the other ways that we were, oops, the screen. How about the screen? Um, the, the other ways that we were creating screens, this is actually simpler even than that. So the fact that we're gonna go easier than this, that's cool. Now I also, you know, want to uh, choose my sub palette. So let's say I made this yellow, great, you know, whatever. Um, but okay, let's, let's not do that either. Uh, let's load in a name table, and that's the tile data that exists. I'm going to go to special screens, import name table, and I'm going to go to that same folder, tutorial assets, from beta, nestmaker start screen files. And inside the nestmaker start screen, I have a name table for it. Bam. So now I've got a name table for it. Easy, no problem. Um, I could, you know, when I adjust these colors, it's adjusting the colors that start with the start screen. And I think it's this, this, and this would get me and then I'd change the colors here to whatever I want them to be. And if I wanted to make changes to it, I could 
my screen. So maybe this is where you put your copyright information for your game or whatever you want to put. My screen. Why am I having spelling issues here? S C R E E N. I've been hanging out with a toddler way too much lately. Okay, so my screen. And so now we've got a start screen. I could get in and I could edit these these tiles if I wanted to. And now you can see that the tile set pops up. Okay, I'm not even going to do that. I could set my um, my music on my start screen. And this would play the same one that plays, you know, during my, right now, during the actual game, which is kind of obnoxious of a song, but whatever. And if I want this to show up in my game, I need to go to uh, game info and where it says skip start screen, I need to not skip the start, start screen. Disable skip start screen. I'm going to hit OK. And I'm going to press play. And I'll get my fancy schmancy little nest maker start screen here with that really annoying jingle. Oops. Uh, I changed, I'm sorry, real quick. I just changed the name of this folder. So let me... Sorry, um, just have to do that. There we go. I changed the name of the folder when I uploaded the current version to the site, so. There we go, so now I got my start screen. And I can see I've got to get back in and I've got to mess with the attributes because the, uh, the attributes are messed up. It looks right here. Um, what's happening is one of these is using the that this one probably is using that attribute and it's overwriting this. And so I need to make that show that attribute. And it gets kind of funky when you're doing the click. That, that's what I'm saying. Our interface sucks for this. We are aware of it. It is one of the things that we are working on, but we know that that's going to take a little while to get the way we want it to. So... Um, before we move on, let me show you how, okay, I'm on the start screen, but nothing happens. I can't do anything because I haven't told it to do anything in that game. I haven't told it to, to, you know, I haven't given it any input command. So I'm stuck there. It'll never go to the actual game. Let's say I want to get to the actual game. I need to go to my input editor and I need to, I need to, or first I need to pull in a script. So I'm going to go to input scripts and go to basic module scripts, input scripts, and there's one that's just a start game. Where is it? Start game right there. And all this does, if I look at it, is it's, it changes the state from start game uh, to, it changes the state from the intro screen to actually starting. It puts it in start game state, which is going to do all the things that load up the game. Um, and then it turns the sprites on as well, uh, just in case that they're off. So um, what I'm going to do is in my input editor. Uh, this is where I'm gonna say on my start screen, when I press the start button, it's gonna call that new start game script that I that I wrote. And if you want other things to happen here, um, like if you are clever and you want the left and right buttons to do something, like maybe choose a menu option and, and you wanna draw a sprite that you know shows one player, two player. Now we haven't talked about two player games, but you get the idea. Easy hard mode and easy takes you to screen seven and hard takes you to screen 35. You could then write scripts uh, and point that, you know, figure out ways to do that using variables and, and whatnot. So just to let you know, like all that functionality, all that stuff, like, can you enter the Contra code and make things happen? Yes, you could absolutely, if you can figure out a way to do that in assembly language. So that's obviously an advanced use, but it's totally possible within the limitations of NestMaker. Absolutely. Um, but now we've got, if I press start in the start screen mode, um, when I'm in the start screen game state, uh, it will you it will do that start game script. So now let me test. Let me test and here we go. Got my game, start screen, and now I'm playing my game. Awesome. So um, that's that's how to uh, get a start screen going. But let's say we want to actually use an external tool like Shiro's Nest Screen tool to get better graphics in here. Um, I've actually got Shiru's next screen Nest screen tool. I thought I had, yeah, here it is, right here. Um, so let's take a look at Shiru's Nest screen tool. Here it is. This is a much cooler way to design uh, graphics over here. This is your tile set. This is your name table. And you can go through and you could start to design. These are your palettes now. I'm not sure if these are going to export or you're going to have to do these manually. But let's, uh, let's actually take a a bitmap of something and import it here. Uh, in fact, you know, let's let's use this bitmap right here. 
because this is just the greatest start screen imaginable. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Oh. The greatest start screen I can imagine right there, right? Everyone agrees that would just make that's a game that you want to play. Um, and all I did was I, I took a uh, image that was taken and I reduced uh, its colors. And I think this is reduced down to 256. I'm not sure how this is going to work when I import it. But um, you could actually try just importing an image. Uh, it needs to be in uh, 16 colors or 256 colors in order to import. But once I've got once I've done that, I um, mean, you could do that from paint, by the way. So if I let's see if I open this with paint, uh, open with paint. So you could do it if you're familiar with Photoshop. Great. Um, I can go to file, save as and go to a bitmap and I can change it to a 256. It'll do either of these a 16 color or a 256 color bitmap. Um, so what I can do is I can now import a let's see best offsets lossy import threshold not sure what the best way to do this would be but like let's do um let's just try the the top one here and import it okay so that's a little bit funky um let's see what happens if i just change the background color here to uh, yeah that's a little bit funky let me just let me import it but let me import it just in monochrome and then i i could um uh let me export this from in paint as a monochrome image let's see open with paint and then i can color it inside here so i'm going to save as and make it a monochrome and it'll look like that and now i can import that whoops no i've done this before hold on sorry let me open now that i've got it in monochrome it doesn't like monochrome okay no problem so now that it is monochrome i'll save it as a 16 color which you know there's only black and white here so um so now when i import it there we go. So now I've got this this graphic here, and it's created a tile set for me, and it's created a uh, name table for you know created a tile set out of the name table graphics. So now I'm gonna you know set my name table size uh, to standard, um, and now I've got a standard size name table, and now I could get clever and you know draw. A, um, Let's see, I'll put my name in here. J O horrible letters. Joe. Joe. Okay. And now I could take this and put it here and put it there. Awesome. So now I sort of have a, a name table um, that I could use in a game. So now I can uh, export. I could uh, name table. I could save save name table and attributes. And I'm gonna just put that so my desktop and put it Joe name table. And I'm going to select my CHR file and save selection because I just select I hit. So shift and selected that and I'll put Joe CHR. Okay, so now um, I'm going to open back up my tool and I'm going to go into my pixel editor and I'm going to let me uh, get that aspect ratio back. I'm going to open up from my desktop that Joe CHR here. Oh, you know what? I'm sorry. I made it a CHR. So I'm going to go to my CHR viewer. I'm going to load the CHR Joe CHR. There we go. And I just save this as a BMP. So Joe CHR. So I can edit it with my um, tile editor. So now it's a BMP file. I can go to my pixel editor, uh, get the aspect ratio back, uh, open up desktop joe chr bmp so now i've got all the those those tiles loaded um and now i could you know get this through a palette i'm not worried about it because i know that this palette is incorrect it's gonna be whatever is on the start screen um but now i you know i could even do this i'm gonna save this 
as my start screen graphics. And now I'm like, you know what? I want better letters in here. So I'm going to open up my HUD and I'm actually going to copy all the HUD graphics and control C. And then I'm going to open up my start screen graphics and I've got plenty of room down here. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to hit save. And now I'm going to go into my start screen and obviously this is completely messed up. So I'm going to import my name table file. And there it is. And now I just have to change, uh, you know, what I wanted this to say, J O E game G A M E exclamation point. And I could get in and I could color these if I wanted. Now I know the text uses this uh, last sub out here, so I'm gonna make that white. Um, and everything else is, I think, being colored with this. So if I got in, if I made this like a peach color, that then I, you know, and what I could do is I could then make this different. I can get in and I could manipulate the, the colors of everything. Um, but for now, let's just say I'm going to go with that. And I want that to, to, to be used for my game. So now I've got literally Joe's amazing game. Awesome. And I'm going to make sure that all these are. And what you might want to do is make sure that everything around these uses... Uh, if you're if you're using ours to to draw, if you're using ours to create, um, you could see this one above Joe is using this last sub palette. So I'm going to make sure that all these around this use this sub palette, and that's just the easiest way to make sure that it's conforming. Okay, and awesome. So now this is this is my tile set. This is my start screen, and when I go to export and test. I have my stupid, dumb face looking at you from my Nintendo Entertainment System. So that's just a quick look at, uh, and I'm sorry, there's a couple of flubs in there, but you get the idea, hopefully, how we can make a start screen, how we can then you utilize uh, uh, external tools like Shears Nest Screen Tool, how we can make use of the character viewer to then look at a CHR file that's created uh, in, a, in a Nest environment or, or something meant for the Nest, and then turn it into a bitmap that our tool can then use. Uh, how we can edit that bitmap from an external tool or from an internal tool, uh, how we can start a game from the start screen. So hopefully I gave you a lot of information as far as what you can do with special screens. You can do the same type of thing with a win screen. And I always recommend that with a when you make a win screen, you do the same exact process. Um, you also, uh, in your input editor, make a, uh, a win uh, a default so that when you press at least the start button, the game restarts. So you have some way to restart it. Um, either that or you put some sort of animation, you do something, some kind of timer in code that after a certain amount of time, it resets. Otherwise, you get stuck on the windscreen. So just a couple ideas there uh, as far as how to get started with a special screen. And next, we're, we're going to really start to dig into uh, how to create a custom module and back up your entire uh, script folder for when there's updates and you don't want to lose all your work and have to start over. So awesome. Thank you guys for checking this out.